Good day Leslie Kim Martin here giving you another special episode of special documentation of November to remember present November 2015 Paris attacks France had been on high alert for terrorism since the Charlie Hebdo shooting and a series of related attacks in January by militants belonging to Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula and had increased security in anticipation of the 2015 year. United Nations Climate Change Conference, scheduled to be held in Paris at the beginning of December, as well as reinstating border checks a week before the attacks throughout 2015, France witnessed smaller attacks, the February stabbing of three soldiers guarding a Jewish community center in Nice. The June attempt to blow up a factory in St. Quentin Villaver and the August shooting and stabbing attack on a passenger train the Bataclan Theater had been threatened a number of times because of its public support for Israel two Jewish brothers, Pascal and Joel Laloux, owned the Bataclan for more than 40 years before selling it in September 2015 in 2011. A group calling itself Army of Islam told French security services they had planned an attack on the Bataclan because its owners were Jewish. In the weeks leading up to the Paris attacks, ISIL and its branches had claimed responsibility for several other attacks, the downing of Metrojet Flight 9268 on 31 October and the suicide bombings in Beirut on 12 November. Intelligence agencies in Turkey and Iraq had reportedly warned of an imminent attack on France months beforehand, but said they never heard back from the French, authorities until after the attacks. According to the Irish Times, a senior French security official said they receive this kind of correspondence every day. This was one of two terrorist cells sent to Europe by the Islamic State in 2015. The other cell consisting of three Syrians was apprehended by German special forces in Schleswig-Holstein in mid-September 2016. The November 2015 Paris attacks, were a series of coordinated terrorist attacks that took place on Friday November 13, 2015 in Paris, France and the city's northern suburb, Saint Denis. Beginning at 9.15 p.m., Three suicide bombers struck outside the Stade de France in Saint Denis, during an international football match, after failing to gain entry to the stadium. Another group of attackers then fired on crowded cafes and restaurants in Paris, with one of them also blowing himself up. A third group carried out another mass shooting and took hostages at a rock concert attended by 1,500 people in the Bataclan Theatre, leading to a standoff with police. The attackers were either shot or blew themselves up when police raided the theatre the attackers killed 130 people, including 90 at the Bataclan Theatre. Another 416 people were injured. Almost 100 critically. Seven of the attackers were also killed. The attacks were the deadliest in France since the Second World War and the deadliest in the European Union since the Madrid train bombings of 2004. France had been on high alert since the January 2015 attacks on Charlie Hebdo offices and a Jewish supermarket in Paris that killed 17 people. The Islamic State of Iraq, and the Levant, ISIL, claim responsibility for the attacks, saying that it was retaliation for French airstrikes on Islamic State targets in Syria and Iraq. The President of France, François Hollande, said the attacks were an act of war by Islamic State. The attacks were planned in Syria and organized by a terrorist cell based in Belgium. Two of the Paris attackers were Iraqis, but most were, born in France or Belgium, and had fought in Syria. Some of the attackers had returned to Europe among the flow of migrants and refugees from Syria. In response to the attacks, 
a three-month state of emergency was declared across the country to help fight terrorism, which involved the banning of public demonstrations, and allowing the police to carry out searches without a warrant, put anyone under, house arrest without trial, and block websites that encouraged acts of terrorism. On 15 November, France launched the biggest airstrike of Operation Channel, its part in the bombing campaign against Islamic State. The authorities searched for surviving attackers and accomplices. On 18 November, the suspected lead operative of the attacks, Abdelhamid Aboud, was killed in a police raid in Saint Denis, along with two others. Three groups of men launched six distinct attacks, 56, three suicide bombings in one attack, a fourth suicide bombing in another attack, and shootings at four locations. The shootings were in the vicinity of the Rue Alibert, the Rue de la Fontaine ROI, the Rue de Chara, the Bataclan Theatre, and Avenue de la Republique. Three explosions occurred near the Stade de France another on Boulevard Voltaire, and two of the Bataclan shooters also detonated their suicide vests as police ended the standoff. According to the Paris prosecutor, the attackers wore suicide vests that used acetone peroxide as an explosive. French police reports on cell phones recovered from crime scenes suggested the attacks were being coordinated in real time from Brussels, Belgium. The location of origin of the terrorist cell that the Paris attackers were members of the attackers killed 130 victims and injured 416 with 80 to 99 taken to hospital in serious condition. Hours before the attacks, Paris's doctors had practiced a mass shooting emergency response rehearsal. Of the dead, 90 died at the Bataclan Theatre. 21 at Lane Bell Equipe, 13 at La Carillon and Le Petit, Cambodge, 5 at Café Bon Bear and La Casa Nostra, and 1 at Stade de France. Among those who died at the Bataclan were a music critic of Lay and Rock Uptables, an executive of Mercury Records France, and the merchandise manager of Eagles of Death Metal, the band that was performing. Some people suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder PTSD, including a man who committed suicide two years after the attacks on September 8, 2021, the trial of over 20 men accused of planning and carrying out the attacks began in Paris. The trial was expected to see the testimony of over 1,800 witnesses and victims include more than 300 lawyers and is expected to last about nine months. The trial is expected to be filmed, however the film will not be released until 50 years after the conclusion of the trial. The trial is housed in a custom-designed chamber within the Palais de Justice and of the 20 accused, 14 will be tried in person and 6 are being tried in absentia. President Holland issued a statement asking the French people to remain strong in the face of the attacks. He also visited the Bataclan Theater and vowed to mercilessly fight against terrorism. Holland chaired an emergency meeting of the French cabinet that night and directed his National Security Council to meet the next morning. The authorities urged the residents of Paris to stay indoors for their own safety and declared a state of emergency. Holland cancelled his trip to the 2015 G20 Antilia summit because of the attacks, instead sending Foreign Minister Laurent Fabius and Finance Minister Michel Sapin as his representatives. On 14 November, Holland announced three days of national mourning. Many heads of state and heads of government, as well as the United Nations, offered messages of condolence and solidarity in the wake of the attacks. On March 15, 2016, Belgian police carried out a raid on a house in the suburb of Forest in Brussels. A police statement said that the raid was related to 
The Paris attacks four police officers were wounded in the raid, and a manhunt for escaped suspects followed. On March 18, 2016, there were further raids in the Molenbeek area of Brussels, two suspects were reportedly injured in one such raid and a third suspect was killed, five people, one identified as Salah Abdeslam, suspected accomplice in the Paris attacks, were arrested during the raid. One, of the people who was present in the Bataclan Theatre on November 13, 2015 during the terrorist attacks was a French artist who works under the pseudonym Fred D. Wilde. In October 2016 he published a graphic novel about his first-hand experience of these tragic events, named Moan Bataclan. On June 6, 2018 Gedeon and Jules Naudet released the documentary November 13.